Tom. And we are VIMTV, Velocities of Music. Today, guys, we're going to honor a written request. We're actually doing two written requests this set mm -hmm. because we just had some awesome written requests, and that's what we like to do. And honestly, i got to tell you, I love the written requests yeah. almost as much as the new albums. It always gets us listening to this stuff that we yeah. probably never would have heard right. of. So the album, um, which was a request that was written by a guy named Josh, wrote a very um, intriguing request about a band called Bark Psychosis um, in their 1994 release, Hex, which really was the only album that came out that they did back then. I mean... They, they came out with one other one. But I feel like, like that was yeah. later. Yeah, uh-huh. Anyways, what makes this album interesting is that it's this experimental rock um, album, but it got dubbed as post rock, and it's really the album that founded the post rock mm -hmm. genre. Which Tom and I, we've reviewed a ton of post rock on VIMTV. Now, keep in mind, there's a, a definite distinction I want to make real right. quick. I know where you're just going. Be, uh, just because. Just because it was the first one to be called post-rock doesn't necessarily mean it was the first post-rock right. album right. in its definition today, yeah. but it's what sparked that categorization and that genre to be right. created, which yeah. is really is still important to know. It's very important, and it, yeah. it just shows how, how pivotal, uh, pivotal of a role this album served, which yeah. means that you have to pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to me, the first thing I noticed when I, I put this on is seven minutes, um, and, and at first, the first couple of lists are seven minutes, seven tracks, um, a good length to it, but uh, seven tracks long, so I knew I was going to have some longer uh, track lengths mm -hmm. there. So more um, building, song building, different structure changes, you know I love that. Um, and um, the first times I listened to this, I didn't really feel like it was that great. It didn't really grab me. So that's something um, to note is that that initial catchiness isn't there. This is one that you really need to listen to, sit down and concentrate on. Um, and you also want to have... Uh, listen to it on a decent set of speakers because holy low end. Um, this thing is all about the low end. It's all about um, the bass and some of the some of the percussion work that they do mm -hmm. um, and the bass drum. I mean, it, that's a huge element of this album to get the full range of sound um, and to really appreciate it. It wasn't until that point that I actually fell in love with this thing. So. And I love the role the bass plays mm -hmm. in, on this album because uh, to kind of nerd out real quick on production stuff, it's cool because you know with this kind of post rock sound, the drums are very, they, they sound very reverb, kind of far away from everything, and while you do have some good kick drum, it doesn't quite pack the punch that it will on like a metal or a rock album. Right. So to, to have that a little distance, holding down those low frequencies, you have the bass, which is these thick, grooving bass lines, anchoring everything down, because the whole point of this post-rock genre is that the guitars, rather than being used for these melodies all the time, or, or, you know, energy and angst like you'll get in, like, punk rock. The whole point is that they're, they're pri providing atmosphere right. and, and just kind of ambient tone. Right. So what else is going to hold down the song than the bass? Right. And that's exactly what they right. do. And that just is an example of very, very good songwriting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to me, these, these songs are actually more like compositions or arrangements than songs themselves, just in how freeform they are and how it, it'll... It's more like you're on, like a ride at Disney World, like in Epcot, where you're in like the little cart and you're going through the jungle and everything, and it's taking you on a ride, a very experimental soundscape. And, and um, that that's, and, and, and to Tom's point, that's what the atmosphere and holding the low end down with the, or holding the song down with the low end, that's what that the, the function of that is trying to do. It's really cool. Um, now, one, one little hiccup that I, I kind of had with it, which is very minor overall, um, is uh, track five, Fingerspit. Um, this really avant-garde, um, atmospheric, artsy track I feel like um, doesn't really mesh well with all the other tracks on the album and I, just for that purpose I still think we could be included on this album I would just move it to the very end um, or, or you know kind of find a way to make it so that the other tracks could all work together more because I feel like otherwise then you having like this point of discontinuity where you're going here and then you're here and then you're back to here you know it's just kind of an awkward moment um and and the only other thing that would keep my score down here tom um and, you know you mentioned to me that you said uh, it just feels like it's kind of hard to really love and attach to it was for me yeah and and i feel like part of the reason that is is because this album you know you're going on all this this moody experimentalism this, this ride through this soundscape and you never really understand why it's a concept in in literature that's mm -hmm. called warm you have to establish warrant. And I feel like in music that applies, um, especially as music gets more and more conceptual or experimental. I feel like artists need to establish why the listener 
anywhere should care about what they're doing. It's just going on a ride to ride. Is it, you know, it's kind of masturbatorial. Um, you're just doing it to do it. And sometimes that's okay. A lot of metal music is just based on that concept. But, but in, in, a, in essence, if you really want your listener to have a part in this, to have a stake in the music itself, to feel it and love it even more because of it, you got to give them a reason why. I don't really feel like they do that here. Not a big criticism, just something of general commentary. I like this thing. I'm going 80. I'm going to meet you there, 80. Um, I, have you guys experienced Hex? If not, uh, I definitely recommend yeah. you check it out. This is something that's, that was a very fun lesson, something that it was, it was cool to tear into. So leave us a comment of your thoughts at www.velocitiesinmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesinmusic. Fit twice, fit, what? what? <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, and uh, you know what? Why not? You know, the new Google Plus. Let's do that too now. Uh, just your social network, you know. What am I trying? Smorgasbord. <laughs> Social networkism. I'm Jake. We're done. I'm Tom. Bye. <laughs>